Hello and welcome to our new video, We Digitalize Our Production. In today's video, you see how we create this shop floor overview. How this works, you see now. In the background, we can see that I've already prepared the basic overall design for the visualization. I've put the layout for our manufacturing facility in as our background. There are light barriers set up throughout the entire production line, each of which is attached to a Peakboard Edge box. With Peakboard Edge, it's possible to quickly and simply install sensors in your production process to read them and to further process the data with Peakboard. These sensors count the good and bad parts at various points, as well as tracking the total parts produced and the pallets loaded at the loading gates. I'm going to start by adding these Peakboard edge boxes to my Peakboard designer. To do that, I'm going to open the Manage dialog of the Peakboard edge boxes, and then select my respective Peakboard edge box before adding it. In the settings, I can see that the connection was successful, and that the Peakboard edge box can be reached. I'll also be able to test whether the sensor inputs are working as intended. Then, I'm going to create the Peakboard Edge data source. Here, I'll add the Peakboard Edge boxes by entering a name and then selecting the respective edge box. I'll start with the OK parts from line 1 and add it. After that, I'll add other edge boxes that count the other OK parts, the not OK parts, the total parts, and the loaded pallets. Next, I'll create a number variable, which I'm going to use to count the OK parts for line 1. I'll repeat the same process for the not OK parts. Now, we're going to set up this same variable for all of the lines, followed by the pallet conveyor system line, as well as the individual loading gates. Then, I'm going to create a refresh script for the data source. Here, I'll use e.name to verify whether the name of the edge box whose value has just changed matches one of my edge boxes. If that's the case and the value is false, then the part has passed through the light barrier and one will be added to the respective variable. Now, so that we can show the counted pieces in the visualization, we're going to create a rectangle. Then, we add a text box inside and connect it to the respective variable. I'm going to repeat this process for each of the other places where anything is counted and the remaining three lines. Next, I'm going to insert a text box with a description of the individual milling machines and of the pallet warehouse. Here, I'm again going to insert a text box inside a rectangle. In order to see which workstations are currently operating, we can access the data from the OPC UA server of our production site. If you'd like to see how that works, make sure to check out our OPC UA video. Here, you can see the production data from our OPC UA data source. When I click on OK, the data source is added. Now, I can create a rectangle which I'll place over the spot where the respective testing station is. Now, I'm going to add some conditional formatting to this rectangle that will change the border color whenever a station is manned. To do that, I'm going to check the OPC UA variable and set the border to green when that value is false. After that, I'll add a text to the rectangle that describes the position of the station and another that will say manned or unmanned depending on the current status of the station. Here, we're again going to use conditional formatting. Now, I'm going to take this rectangle and copy it over to all three lines. Next, I'm going to create an SQL Server data source that contains information about each of the loading gates. 
After first naming it, I'm going to enter the reload interval and use my saved login data to get access. Next, I'll create my SQL query and load the data. I can then add the data source by clicking OK. Once again, I'm going to make a rectangle where I'm going to show the loading gate, the loaded pallets, and the target amount of pallets. Then, I'll repeat that process three times for the other three loading gates. The pallets that are currently loaded in the pallet warehouse are also saved in the SQL Server database. To do that, I'm going to create another SQL Server database, adapt my SQL statement accordingly, and add the value to our visualization. With that, we're finished with our overview visualization, showing the values from the various areas of the production site. What you can see now are our three production lines, the good and the bad parts, the, the state of our three loading gates, so we like our buffer storage. Thanks for watching. In our next video, you see the overview of our orders. See you then.